All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Card Talk. As always, I'm Ryan, joined by Tyler and Lou. Today's episode is going to be just a wide variety of different topics, but we've got to start with Lou is confused with cards. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to preface all of this with last night I had an epiphany, and mm. I feel like I'm the people that I am. I feel like the people that I that we like joke about. Mm. And I, like I feel like the people who are like I don't get this. This is stupid. I don't like it. So it's not real. Mm-hmm. Right? So I'm I'm having an inner conversation with myself. I'm like do I, I let's use Top Shot as the example. There is nothing on we're going to talk about Top Shot more in a little bit, but like there's nothing hotter on planet Earth right now. It feels like than Top Shot. And I just can't figure it out, right? Like I just can't, I, I can't understand for the life of me what everyone's doing. And it's like, yeah, we're just buying them for four hundred, and then you sell them for seven hundred. I'm like, why? And I think a lot of people, and then people's response to that is like, well, why do you sell a, a Zion for five hundred, and then flip, or buy a Zion for five hundred, and then sell it for six fifty? It's like, I I don't know, but it feels real to me and top shot does not and i can't totally figure out what the difference is um and so and then last night i'm like hey i'm gonna try to be part of the cool club i'm gonna try to get a top shot pack and then i get signed out i can't get signed back in so i can't even get a top shot pack like it's just like a, it's a mess and and between with that and what's going on i thought i had a grasp on this whole lebron kobe mj thing i do not so I, I I just don't know what's going on, and I feel very out of the loop, and I feel very confused, and I don't know if you guys feel the same, but I, it just feels like absolute chaos at the moment, and that's where I am. It is absolute chaos, but it's always been absolute chaos. But clarify your uh, Kobe LeBron comment. You mean now that we're seeing or are we seeing a bit of a pullback in some of those areas? It's a little bit of a pullback slash like slowdown. I thought it'd be a little bit hotter than it actually turned out to be. Um, yeah, like I thought we were on a, I thought we were on a full on, like full steam ahead to LeBron 50k tops Chrome, and it just didn't happen. They're back down below like 33, 35 right now mm-hmm. on eBay. Last I looked, so, uh, yeah, I'm confused. So, uh, do you remember? Or I'm gonna like remove from uh, ourselves from cards for a second. Lines around the block for. Uh, dunks last summer was or two summers ago maybe it was like huge Nike dunks were back and Supreme and all of this stuff like we've always talked about people like stuff people want stuff people want to collect and then FOMO is grander than ever right now we also I think people are like looking for comfort and just want things and what's happening with Top Shot you know the the what what will be interesting and what we've talked about with base cards or Clyde Edwards Hilaire for that matter. To me, it's all the same game. It's all the same game. People lack of, and I don't say this in a negative way. I say this in people see some. You know the amount of people that bought Bitcoin at fifty five thousand and then it goes to forty eight, and they wake up this morning today recording on february 23rd they're like that was the dumbest thing ever blah, blah, blah. why'd you tell me to do that and it's like well it's up 50 percent in the last month still at 48 you know and so it it's just we are uh, in the now moment we are uh get rich quick we are uh you know what can this do for me um we are a uh, shiny object type of consumer base i think and i i say all that when i say not negative because there are so many people that have built real careers off of reselling sneakers there are people that are going to make real money off of nba top shot there are people that have made real money and and life-changing money over the last 48 months or yeah for what 48 months which would be four years 48 months uh in cards right and then just yesterday the the official psa closing happens 
uh, Cuban. There's the golden auctions. All of this stuff happening. And people, well, you know, you buy Bitcoin at 55K, it goes to 48. You buy it because you think it's going to go to 100. You don't realize that you're buying in at a run that's been insane. And then when it goes down, it's, oh, that's bad. But if it goes up, it's like, told you so. And so I think that's what the, every, I mean, everyone being at home, the amount of communication, digital consumption, crypto, cards, collecting, printing US money, the government. We just, it's just crazy town out here right now. And what I would implore and what we've talked about on this show many, 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 many times and why I'm, I always feel comforted when I'm around Ryan talking about cards is because education and patience will solve all of the confusion. And Ty, that was gonna, that it's a great segue into my question for, for you and Lou is does like Lou's point with top shot and with the LeBron Kobe market is it seems until you, you bring it up with like, you know, with, with your conversation was, it seems so much like we attention switch switches once a week, right? It was LeBron Kobe Jordan and it's top shot next week. It'll be playoff basketball and Luca and Zion are underpriced. And then a week from after that, it'll be, Hey, Trevor Lawrence has rookie cards. Let's go to that. Does, does it concern you how like people were buying LeBron tops chromes at 48,000 and now they're 33,000, right? Look, people were buying Luca prism tens at two grand. They go to 1100. It seems like the attention goes on something for, you know, as long as a, you know, new TikTok dance or a viral meme is around, right? Like a short period of time. And then as soon as the attention switches, that thing just goes down so quickly. Right, we saw it in the summer with the Ronaldo and the Messi first, the Prism World Cup stuff. Right, like this, this is this seems like cyclical where it's like everybody wants to be in Top Shot now. Half the people on Top Shot, I'm not even sure believe in Top Shot. It's just like they want to be a part of like the attention. The, the, it's the, the thing, craze. exactly. And it seems like that's a dangerous, dangerous path to be on because at some point somebody gets stuck mm-hmm. holding the bag. Yeah, I think that's something that we like, not cer- like the, what you're saying. It, it, we've always talked about FOMO, but I think we've been like circling it more and more recently. And it's become more and more clear that it's very much, it feels like everyone is trying, everyone feels like they can get on top of the next thing before the next thing happens. But if everyone's doing the next thing, it's no longer the next thing. Mm-hmm. I, I I just can't get out of my head though. The, the, um, you know, larger conditions at play here in that and why I keep going back and saying that I think this summer is just going to be insane. Everything is so new and fragile. A year ago, a year ago today, February 23rd, if you said we were going to do a virtual podcast where we all record from our home and have a sponsor and put out, you know, like valuable content through just we all join a web link. And have a mic and do it like it's just everything is so new. Everything is is being reset yeah. a bit, in my opinion. And and I think that with everyone being at home and information at your fingertips and at scale and looking left and looking right and this person even ha- this person's happy. How do I do that? Blah blah blah. Money, you know, stocks are up like crazy, but people are struggling. It's just I think everyone is a bit on FOMO tilt, or how can I get ahead a little bit, or. Um, I listen to this influencer or that person or I listen to car talk or I listen to this show or that show. They have the answer. Boom. It just, to me, it just keeps going back to one day at a time, educate patients, make decisions that you feel personally confident in. It will work out even because if you're wrong, then you know, it's you because what can happen is someone says buy Luca at 1400 and it goes to a thousand. And then you're like, this person blah, 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 blah. shouldn't have listened to that person. No, that's on you. And then if it goes the other way, that's on you too, which is good. Yeah. I think what you said, it sounds a little bit, if someone just heard you say like, Oh yeah, like we're on zoom and that's why the card world is weird. I think that sounds a little bit insane, but the context of like, 
every like nothing makes any sense right now. I think is the larger point. Like nothing, nothing is adding up currently. Uh, and you know, I, I don't want to get too deep on it on a cards podcast, but like it, it just, if everything is going to be moving so fast, um, if everything's going to be moving so fast to get back into the world of cards fully, it makes me just want to fully focus on the ultra rare and like the, uh, the low population. Um, and, and that's, that still brings me back to LeBron autos and Kobe autos and MJ stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very strange. It's all very strange right now. Ryan, I, think, I don't know how you feel. Yeah. I, I, I Lou, I agree with you a hundred percent. And I think the big, th- the big point in this is like, this is just getting started. Like Tyler said this summer, like we're early in this, right? Top shots going to continue to, 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 to gain attention. There's going to be more people getting in the market. Like I've said it before, wait till Barstool starts getting people in cards on a lot more, you know, they start producing more card content that's coming, right? Barstool is all about, you know, the what 24, 22 to 34 year old male. I mean, probably the average card collector in, in most sense of the word. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I think this is just, this is early, but Lou, I'm I'm still with you at this point. You know, while I think there's opportunities elsewhere, the the ultra rare stuff is the stuff I'm certainly more intrigued by. It just seems to be the only thing that makes sense, and like anything else is guessing. And I don't think it's a good time to be guessing. Yeah, I think that's where you know that that's where it gets dangerous. Hey, I'm going to get in on Top Shot. I'm going to guess. I'm going to you know put in 500 and see how it works out or I'm going to, you know, just go buy a LeBron and just guess and see where it works. out. I think it, like I said, Tyler, you mentioned earlier, the education piece of it is, is important, right? Are you willing to put the time in and figure out what, you know, what makes sense to you? And to get us back grounded in what we've talked about for the last 35 episodes is that if you're going to go into top shot and spend 500 bucks and you get the reps so that a year from now, you know, when, the this whole thing you know digital collectibles becomes a bit more of a thing you are now educated great like if you're doing it for the reps and for the learning similar to how we say like you know keep it moving in and out on sales because you learn more each time you understand you deal with more customers you're you know interacting you're just understanding the market more if that's your use case amazing I don't but think if you're just putting money doing thinking that, that. that you're going to be able to get it out the next day at double you're just going to end up, even if you do, it's a slippery slope because like, yeah, it's just not caught. realistic. Yeah. yeah t- I think, I think we can say that, right? Like, yeah, it's for the reps and all that, but like no one's doing that. People are trying to make money right now and that's where it's concerning. Yeah. Like, we, we, like I said, there's always, I, we've always talked about this, some of this stuff at some point and you know, a year ago it was, Hey, if you made 10% in a month, you did pretty good. Now it's like, Hey, got to make 25% in a day. And I just, I mean, that's like to be super, super honest with everyone listening. It doesn't make any fucking sense to get to get a LeBron card in a pack for nine dollars and sell it for fourteen hundred dollars the same day. It just doesn't make sense. I don't care. That's not real. <laughs> I like it. I like the energy. Yeah, I like the energy. Uh how about random card stuff? What's going on? Let's just take a two second, you know, switch up the energy real quick. And what are you excited about? Because I am pretty excited that Champions League is back. And for one thing to note, you know, Mbappe, who was all the rage in his base prism, ripped up to three thousand dollars, and then it goes down to five hundred, and everyone forgets who he is. And then us soccer people are like, Champions League's coming. Boom, and then my man goes to Paris, like we talked about on the show last time, buries a hattie in Barcelona, or he goes to Barcelona. He's in Paris. Goes to uh, Barcelona, buries a hattie, and away we go. And I think that, again, goes back to do what you know, do what you like, education, because the, the, the FOMO, the jump on after, will always be there in every market, always, right? You buy an Apple the day after the phone announcement comes out, or have you been reading about what they're up to for the six months prior? Tesla, 
Did you know that they were uh, Musk was probably going to add Bitcoin to the balance sheet, or did you buy, you know, buy and then whatever, buy on the news, sell the rumors, buy the rumors, sell the news? That's what they call it. Uh, so I'm pumped about I'm pumped about Footy. Erling Holland is an amazing human, by the way. Uh, sick, sick, sick player. But uh, I'm excited about the football, proper football card market. Um, I have in the, in the world of of football proper football i have been attempting to understand uh so rare a little bit better mm. ty i would i know i texted you about this last night i would like to talk about it a little bit mm-hmm. uh how it works uh, to be clear it's like it's a very similar thing to a top shot but i would like to talk about it a little yes or no i would like to talk about it a little bit so um so rare is something we've been uh shooting the shit about internally and it is uh, again a, a digital um collectible uh asset but what i believe is much different is that it is a um it's also a fantasy game so it's it's daily fantasy you know they like when DraftKings was super popping for daily fantasy um it was you buy cards and then you can play them in a fantasy game, and you buy them for real money, and you have them forever. And they're, and they're expensive. They are expensive. It, it depends. No different than, you know, a messy rookie is super expensive, mm-hmm. but you know, a Sancho base tops Chrome. Isn't. Yeah, but like everything is of a hundred. Like how? Like what's the Mbappe so rare? So what they do is right the way this this works is. They get the, uh, you know, team rights they secure, and then they make the cards for the players. Cards come out, and every year, they will never have more than 111 cards per player. So Mbappe has 100 base, 10 what they'll call rare, or super rare, I believe, and then one of one, and then a one of one unique. Those are given out into the marketplace either through auction or through rewards in their fantasy games. So then when you go to enter the games, you can only use your cards. There's also an entire, like, when you sign up, you get 10 free cards. So you can grind your way up. You don't really ever have to put money in if you're a a grinder at playing the game. But at the same time, the the game aspect makes it, I believe, 1,000% different than Top Shot because there's actually utility value to these things. Um, There's a collectible scarcity aspect, but there's an entire community and think about how big daily fantasy is even still people don't even talk about it that much but huge there's an entire community around the fantasy game which if you know much about proper footy both fantasy premier league fpl is a huge deal as well as fifa ultimate team and madden ultimate team and what that what i believe they're gonna eat at is Right now in FIFA, I mean, people will spend thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to be an amazing FIFA Ultimate Team player, which is a in in FIFA video game. You buy packs, no different than kind of regular cards, and you, and then you get randomized players with their attributes. It might be Player of the Week, so they're a little bit better. You then play the actual video game with those, but the second FIFA 22 comes out, they're irrelevant. They have zero value. And there's very much growing angst from the clubs and from players about FIFA and and their licensing for the video game with EA Sports. And so that's why I think it's completely different than, say, a Top Shot. And And that's not to say, like, Top Shot's in beta. I get it. It's early, all this jazz. But um, I I wanted to say, so everyone's clear, for anyone who has not listened to it, has paid attention to So Rare at all, and I'm sure Ryan has not either, a Mbappe, the last sold Mbappe again, the base quote unquote, which is of a hundred, sold for fourteen thousand euros, which is like sixteen thousand dollars, seventeen thousand dollars US. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what you're looking at, and it is it is a fairly limited player base at the moment, right? Yep. Yep. So, um, it's interesting. Rye, what is the most in demand card in your shop? On a daily basis, whether that be product, player, whatever. 
So when a new product is released, it's always the new product, right? It's, you know, certified basketball, limited football, right? Series one baseball. It's, it's always that card wise. It's always, almost always LeBron. I mean, that's, that's pretty consistently what it is, is, uh, it is LeBron stuff. So I, I don't see that changing in the near future. He's a beast. He just continues to be a beast. Yeah, I just think it goes down to what Lou's point is, though, is, you know, it, I like LeBron. I think LeBron's value long term is as is, is safe as it gets. I, you know, grew up in Columbus. So LeBron was in Cleveland, got to see him win a title, come back from 3 1. I love watching LeBron play basketball. I'm, you know, I'll, you know, we, we could argue all day, Jordan and LeBron. I'm going to take LeBron. I just, I grew up watching him. He, he does a lot more for me than Jordan does. So I think that goes back to the whole like collect what you like thing. You know, I think it's again a safer play to 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 collect what you like. Then you're not as concerned as, hey, is this card going up? Is this card going down? If you like it, it doesn't make as much of a difference. You're you know you're you're putting in your collection box and you're 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 moving on. You're not like, hey man, did I make fifty percent on this card in a week? So yeah, for me, it's still it's still going to go back to LeBron. Love it. Aligned. I also think KD is kind of cheap right now. I want to put that out there. I'm just enjoying soccer. I love soccer so much. I've never um, watched it. Never once. Uh, KD, yeah, beast. You know what? The, you know what? I, I, James Harden, though. Guys playing yeah. Some basketball. Yeah. Things can change fast. We're being yelled at. All right, let's keep it moving. For s- something that seems like we've talked about for probably three months, four months, maybe. Maybe my time is off, but CLCT, I believe it's what it's traded as. Collector's Universe, the parent company that owns PSA, everyone's favorite beloved grading company, has officially, official, officially announced the sale. It is completed. The deal is done. $853 million deal turns the company from public to private. Shareholders will receive $92 per share. PSA has gone from a publicly traded company to a private company, and I believe that has implications in its transparency and business, uh, but at the same time has been acquired, and, and the group behind it, you got to say, is very um, uh, innovative, forward-thinking, um, and, and we got to assume that they are going to be looking to um, continue to add brand value, but also just marketplace value in terms of speeding up, you know, turnaround, maybe bringing a digital aspect to it. You know, you got to imagine with all these, you know, well-to-do and successful business folks that are now involved, it's not like they're just not paying attention to Top Shot or how can you digitize ownership how you know can each one of a, a cards get that gets slabbed by psa have a, a, a digital token associated with them that you can display online all interesting things um but uh yeah Rai, i would love to get get your thoughts i know that we are sitting here super backed up on grading submissions um but at the end of the day psa still reigns supreme even though i've seen one or two hg a c s v uh cards in my timeline of late yeah i think that like you said there's we you know like we talked about earlier kind of getting these these moments where fads happen with you know hg and i think hga looks really cool uh you know the let's call it what it is those slabs do look cool Mm -hmm. i'll be interested to see how much market you know market traction they get and you know continue to have for the next couple months but yeah, just like you said, PSA reigns supreme at the moment. I don't anticipate that changing anytime soon. If, if you're involved in the market and you've seen completed eBay sales recently, you're you're aware what PSA brings, uh, you know, to to a card's value. Um, but yeah, I, I'm. You know, we, we've talked about this before. I'm super excited to see what that that team does. Right, I, you know, Nat's one of the people I look up to in this hobby. I mean, if if you've ever seen that guy's collection, it's it's the it's a collection. Yeah, it's up there. It's it's wild. Um, so to be able to 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 see that, um, to be able to see what he's gonna do, I think it's gonna be 
exciting. I'm, I'm eager to see what happens. I was just looking uh, a year ago today. CLCT uh, was trading at $23 a share. So it came off the board 4X. It's pretty good. 4X in the last year. So but that's it, probably that's probably similar to the market though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not saying it's you not. Know, Jordan, Jordan rookies are probably up 4X. Yeah, more. Yeah. More. Um, for sure more. And Al, most things are and submissions are definitely up 4X. Sure, 100%. But I think it plays into our you know how we opened it and the energy that we opened this thing with of like you invest in it at 20 you know 30 and then you just pulled in your 92 top shot sounds super enticing right now you know what i mean because why if i just did that there why can't i over here and i think we've also talked in the show about cards and sometimes your own successes can be your own biggest vulnerability because you you kind of what we do read something like when we make a play and we fail we take time to think about why and what we could have done different when we make a play and it succeeds we never take into account that like maybe we got lucky or maybe it wasn't like we weren't in control of this situation you know and so then we just believe anything we touch is gold I thought, well, I mean, I was right on CLCT and uh, Top Shot, I'm right, going to be right about that too. And I, so that I just wanted to speak to. Jordan, Rook, everything's up. So everything. Like, well, I would not. There's everything nothing that is down. So that that is uh, a bit of my energy there. So let me ask you this then. They just, deals completed. Mm -hmm. Not in the, t you know, all the investors take over. Yep. What, what changes do you see a month from now? Uh, UI, UX, feedback loops in terms of where your submissions stand. Information, communication. Yeah, I, I think it's easy to it's easy for anyone listening right now to say, get my cards back to me faster. Realistically, that's not, a, that's not a feasible thing, nor I don't think they would want to. What they can do in the meantime is be more clear about where your cards are in the grading process, slash give you better give you a better uh, key into what you're going to have before it actually arrives at your doorstep. Typically what happens is they tell you what your grades are and then it's pretty much there at your door two days. I could very much see a world where it takes like, you know, an extra two or three weeks, but you know what your grades are. Interesting. Yeah. I think that is, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, is it counterintuitive to their business? Maybe a bit sure, but Knowing if I sent in something today, a bit of a more realistic timeline of what I'd, when I would get them back, I think it's healthy for their brand. Yeah, like I, I know we've laughed about like they don't want to tell us when we're going to get our grades back. It doesn't matter how long it takes, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it would be nice to know that when I send in my express, I'm going to get it in three weeks and I can get like a little bit more of an estimated return time. PSA prices are rumored to be going up this week, BGS2. Not surprising. Hmm. It's from Jason. It makes it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it makes all the sense in the world to me. I don't know. Yeah, it's I like don't know what BGS we, is doing, but we, we can't sit here and say that we're surprised that prices are going up, right? Like demand is at an all time high. It, yeah, and I think if, people, if, would, people would counter that and be like, "Well, HGA is increasing their prices," and it's like, "Cool, HGA was invented forty five minutes ago, so." And I, mean, I understand. He's only doing two thousand cards a week. Yeah, like, and by the way, this is no disrespect to HGA. This is a brand new company. I fucking love when new companies come up and like try to get in the mix, all that stuff. But like, let's be really clear about what twenty two hundred cards is. That's like not a lot of cards. There's people. There's people. We, individuals. I will tell you, we send more than twenty two hundred cards a week to PSA. A week, and to that's PSA. for the entire company. And I'm not super big. I, right, like we're, we're tiny, and in the grand scheme, are two submitted cards. Yeah, I think I think the the context is important for people who don't understand, uh, or or just confused by like the actual size of these companies and, and what I, the amount of business they're actually doing. Is and again, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just hard to argue that like, hey, if we raise prices one dollar, 
you'll stop submitting cards. Right? Like Lou and Ty, if you're going to plan to submit 100 cards next Tuesday and price goes up on every single card, $1, are you going to not submit? We've done – no, we've had this conversation several times. It's math. It's basic math. Yeah. It just The brand means so much in the marketplace. It just – it's so much easier to sell a PSA graded card than it is anything raw anymore. So I mean, I just have no interest in in submitting anywhere else. That's just what it comes down to. Zero. Be curious to see how long that lasts. I, you know, is that something? <laughs> Me that, too. Right? It's Prism. Ryan, right? have you have you submitted to HGA? No. Only you? Uh, maybe at some point in the future. I, my big thing is, is like, it's very similar to Prism, right? Prism's been the brand in cards for a while, right? For like, this isn't one of those like fads that comes and goes where it's like, Hey, we want this. We want that. This is Prism's been the brand in cards for a while. PSA has been the, 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 the brand in cards for a while, right? It does eventually select or optic make a little bit more sense. Maybe, but oh, for now was, it's, it's still PSA. You recall a time, I might be wrong. Do you recall a time, you, Ryan, that Beckett was held to a higher esteem than PSA? BGS grading? It's been a, like, I don't remember, again. Or maybe when they were equal? Yes, long, long time ago. Yeah, long time ago. Probably five years. Which is not that long. Uh, I mean, it is, but it's not. You know, Prism, whether it's Mosaic or Optic or Select or all this or Top Shot, for that matter. You know, these these things do change. One more thing about Top Shot, too. The argument of there's 15,000 Zions, so 15,000 Top Shots is better, defeats your argument. It doesn't support it. So I want everyone to keep that in mind when they're speaking about this product. And that's it. All right, so let's go into play of the week. We're, uh, we'll bring Jason here in a second to uh, help us with this. But again, play of the week is brought to you by eBay, your number one spot for cards and collectibles. So Jason, as always, collects all of the plays of the week that you guys submit to us. He'll he'll pick the best four to eight of them and he'll present them to us live on this show so just to be transparent tyler lou and i do not see these before the episode we have no idea at all of what's coming so again if you're ever interested in submitting to these jason will be collecting those so you can reach out to us on twitter or on instagram at card talk pod so you guys ready all right ready to rock First play of the week this Ooh. comes from, Tyler, did I say Jeff Mazzella? Yeah. On yep. IG. Mm-hmm. And it's a Joe Frazier rookie. Uh, Jason, can you blow that up a little bit? It's a little hard to read. 1964 rookie PSA 6, pop 2, highest grade. So it's a PSA 6, Joe Frazier. And the, the quote from Jeff here is, with the Summer Olympics coming up and Ali on the rise, I feel like this should follow PSA 6 with none graded higher. So is this the uh, Joe Frazier rookie card? Is that what this is? I believe so. I believe so. That's what it's looking like. I like it. I like the play. I like boxing. I think combat sports are on the rise. MMA obviously has been really cruising along. YouTube fight videos. Real YouTube fighters really cruising along. Smoking Joe is a legend, absolute legend. Maybe he's not Ali, but legend. I think it's a great play. Sold. So is this a Jason? You threw sold on here. I'm assuming he bought this for sixteen hundred. Cool. Yeah, he bought it. Yes, he bought yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, without taking price into account, I mean, I think this is a more this is a collector's item, in my opinion. And my thought would be, you need to, you know, you got to think about the demand side. So demand might be lower, but at the same time, if you find the right buyer, I think you can make a decent profit off it. I think it's a, I think it's a play. I, I it's like it for the idea that like Lou and I uh, love Lou's point earlier about the rarity, right? Like if somebody ever gets on there and it's like, Hey, you know what? I want to get a Joe Frazier rookie card. 
th- there's there's two of them graded a six, and there's nothing higher. Two. There's, you know, 10,000 group breakers and cards alone, and, you know, two people can buy this Joe Frazier card. Again, you know, some I just have a hard time believing someone out there doesn't want a Joe Frazier rookie card. So, you know, I'm not that person, but it's intriguing, uh, you know. Uh, the rarity aspect of it is is certainly the the intriguing part for me. It's also yeah, it's the rarity part, and it's like when you have the highest of a card, it can get really weird really fast. Like it can, I, for it sure. It can get really really interesting. So I like to play. I like to play too, and that's the thing is you might just have to work a little bit harder to find you know your exit, but mm-hmm. it's just work. All right, Jay, next one. All right, so this is a this is from Golden Dot Sports Cards on IG. It's a Bryce Harper rookie, 2012 Topps Chrome. It says was PSA 10 read. Saw this pop up as a follow Harper PSA 10 listings. Harper was damaged during shipment. Guy decided to sell it and accepted my ninety nine dollar offer. Card itself was not damaged. So basically, the card he bought the card, he got it graded, it graded a ten. When it came back, then the the car the case was cracked, so he cracked it out and sold it as is. What a PSA PSA tens have been going for around thirty. Yeah, I mean that's an that's an amazing play. A hundred bucks to three. It, it's a three hundred fifty dollar card. Period. Three hundred dollar card. Risky. Super risky. Don't don't. It's you can't submit it. Like he's saying he bought it and it's completely out of the case, so you can't submit the whole thing back and have it. And slabbed again. You have to regrade it. What if it gets yeah. a nine? The card wasn't damaged. Hold on. Also, well, I got thrown off by its golden sports cards. How do we know my man just didn't stick a random slab behind it? Exactly. Uh, yeah, like, I guess, he could have sure. swapped a Harper that got an eight for a Harper that got a ten and said this was the one that got a ten. But who's cracking ten cases for no reason? I'm not saying you didn't crack it. I'm just saying that guy could have been like, hey, I'm going to re-slab this myself and sell this as a PS. Again, I'm not yeah. trying to dash on gold. And I just, it's a, it's a risky. Oh, I mean, you're really play. crushing Golden's life here. Gold I'm just was excited about to be about honest. This play. It's Golden a, was, a risky play. I'm being, I'm also, being honest. I mean, how Holder was damaged during shipping. That happens. That's not that. That's not that. Not, not, we, yeah, not, not. Out of the realm of possibility for okay, sure. Okay. Okay. I mean, I make me feel I a little a, bit better about the play. I have a Jordan Alvarez PSA 10 sitting in a crack case right now. Interesting. I'm saying if it gets a 10, absolutely love the play. I just think it's, it comes with a little bit more risk than some of the plays we'll probably see this week. Agreed. And I think it would be nice to know, you know, accepted my $99 offer. What did he have it listed as? Oh, Wait, we skipped the most important part of this, by the way. Go on a five day with card collector two grading. Uh, we're gonna ah, we're gonna know why? we're gonna know the answer why? to this question very soon. Uh, this will be awesome, Jason. This is we gotta revisit this. This will be great, Jason. This is awesome. So it was listed for one hundred and fifty, and the guy accepted ninety nine. Okay. Can't wait! Can't wait to follow up. That's on this. phenomenal. I can't it's, believe we missed that. The first I time. will make sure that this gets tracked, and I will let you guys know how this does, and then wanna, we'll bring it up. I don't want to, you know, infringe on your business, but like maybe you should two day it just for the content. You know what I mean? I will. I will make sure this this is true. <laughs> we will have a good idea of what this card does. <laughs> That's awesome. Next one. I can't wait to follow up on that. Me either. All right, Jay. What's the next one? All right. So this is from the JP Bro A three one. Is that right, Lou? Uh, JP Bro A three one. Yep. Yep. So this is a 2015 Kobe Bryant. Uh, Prism Ruby Wave out of 350 bought for 127.50 at auction. Ty Lou, any thoughts here? Mm. Not really interested. I don't. Is this is 2015 the last year of Kobe Prism? No, he's in 2019. Okay, so then is there any anything behind this, or is it, I'm confused? So a couple things that stand out to me on it, right? You buy Kobe, it's serial numbered. Right, it's got a limited pr- print run. I'd rather have, uh, you know, I, I enjoy the 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 serial numbered stuff. Um, Prism's the, the the brand for basketball. The thing I would go into is, does it have potential to grade? Right? Can you ten this? It obviously has a lot of upside as a ten. Um, so certainly not. I it mean, does have a lot of upside as a ten. I, I would assume it's 
twice, you know, at, I mean, it's probably at three. I'll look, but without looking, I would guess a three and a quarter, 350 PSA 10. Cool. Hold on, let's see. Just doesn't interest me. Yeah, me either. But the, cheap, the cheapest one up on eBay is up for $1,000 as a 10. And there are none sold. So interesting. Again, ever you know, to each his own. Uh, it's surely not the the worst one. A nine five sold for three uh, three hundred uh, about a week ago. So yeah, I think it's got potential. I mean, a, a PSA, if you get a PSA nine on this, it'll sell similar to a BGS nine five. So if you get two fifty for a nine, you know, you're doubling your money. That's that's great return. I'm 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 intrigued by it. I like this one a lot actually. Uh, interesting because I just, what I, what I think about is what could you spend $127 50 cents on card wise? Alternatively, obviously Kobe's goaded, but if I'm going in after Kobe, even as a smaller time collector, I think there's other things. I don't know, you know, Ruby wave 2015. I'm indifferent. It's kind of whatever to me. Centering definitely off left to right. It's more whatever than not whatever. I'll say that. Yeah, it's more like, all right, I see the play. I see the vision. Yeah, again, I just, you know, we, we argue on this show that you don't need a million dollars to make a buck on this, right? Like, you could buy this Kobe for 120 The cheapest one up on eBay now is up for 200 You buy it for 127 get a nice clean picture of it, make the color pop. You go throw it up on eBay for 189 beat the cheapest one by 10 bucks. You sell it, you're still making $40. I mean, that's... Mm-hmm. You know, right? Again, it little little bit of work here and there adds up over time, right? That compounding effect of you know doubling your money on, or you know making thirty dollars or forty dollars, you know thirty percent on a on one car. That's 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 real, and I think that's a lot more, you know, realistic for most collectors than hey, let's go buy a LeBron tops Chrome PSA ten. I so. agree. Jay, next one. All right, this is football card of the day. Football card of the day. And it's clean lot of three 1984 FTCC Marvel superheroes first issue cover factory sets. Page seventy nine ninety nine. So Ty Lu, Marvel experts, I'll let you Marvel uh, experts talk about this. One. I don't own a single Marvel card. So Lou, you all the uh, <laughs> Lou, your middle name is Marvel. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. You're not wrong. You're more right than not right. Um. So 1984 Marvel is interesting. You know, again, this is another one of these things that it feels like everyone's just trying to chase is trying to change the calculation of something that's already happening. So to me, I don't know what these packs do. I I believe to, to my understanding, I'll say this 1984 Marvel uh, populations are very, very low, obviously. Uh, And, you know, let's say you open those packs and you rip them out and you get high grades in the cards. I'm sure there's money to be made on those. Um, I'm trying to look up what packs do by themselves. So he's got, he bought three packs for eighty dollars. These are the sets it says, Lou. And the last set did forty, and a set before that did seventy for one set. One sold for one hundred and sixty dollars. I just searched nineteen eighty four Marvel factory set. So did I. One sixty, one fifty five. So wait. I'm confused. So one of them is doing 150. When did he buy this? Do we know when he bought this? 211. 211. 211. Yep. Yeah, I mean, well, then he's already made a ton of money on these because if you're at 100 bucks, let's call it 120 bucks each for each set. He bought three of them for 80 bucks. That's pretty good. Right? I am about to check out his Instagram. I'm looking right now. I mean, the last one was 160. One before that was 155. And the one before that was 108. Hmm. And again, these these uh, pop PSA pops are very very low that I know about. So, good call. Football cards of the day, making a play. Yeah, I think that's a strong play. And he's got a fresh Instagram, <laughs> and it seems like he makes smart plays. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Play. I like the play. All right, next one. Oh, does that say premier soccer investing on IG? Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. So this is a this is a much bigger card. 2014 Prism World Cup matchups. Uh, or say math cups. Uh, 
matchups. It's matchups. It's a matchups card. It's an insert in the 2014 Panini Prison World Cup. It's two goats. It's, you know, the 08 Tops Chrome LeBron Kobe. It's, I, I think this card has real juice to it. I'm trying to figure out why it's 21 3 with two days to go. Yeah. So there's a couple things that stand out to me on this. Why is there still time remaining? And does the matchups being spelled wrong affect the list price of the card? Is it a play if you didn't actually make it? <laughs> yeah. Jason. It's a beautiful card, in my opinion. It's a huge card, in my opinion. It's, yeah, it's still up for auction. Is Yeah, so, Jason, you did my man. Premier Soccer Investing Dirty. I <laughs> um, Because I want to give him a big play, but I just don't I just don't got enough data here. But what I'll say is... He said I, he bought it. I mean, he clearly didn't buy it. It's literally up on eBay right now. Cool. Okay. So, maybe he's selling it. But, in general, big fan of this card. Big fan of these two legends. If you know about the game, you realize that LeBron James would need to come into the league, into the NBA, for us to realize, like, Mbappe is not... Messi, at Mbappe's age, was so much further along. Really? In domestic, in his play, he was a center midfielder on his impact. I mean, at 19 years old, the dude was dancing around teams in the Champions League. But Mbappe's won a World Cup. Neither of these guys have. But just the consistency of what these guys have done is akin to LeBron. It's like the Luka argument. Like the body of work that Luka would have to put together to even come close to LeBron James is insane. Hmm. Wow. And these are, these are the guys. Gates say 10's a pop one. These are the guys, and this card is serious. It's a pop one, too. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's definitely a super cool card. Yeah, interesting. So, all right, so that is the last one. So, so what are the other? What can we go? Can we scroll quickly through them just so I can get a look? Marvel superheroes, Red Wave. Oh, I know what I'm picking. Okay. Uh, I'll go first. I picked the Bryce Harper one. Um, I think there's, I think there's real juice. It's a very selective individual time where you it can work out where the guy is selling something that was cracked and that's why he's selling it and blah, blah, blah. And assuming that it does grade a 10, which we will find out thanks to Card Collector 2 grading, um, I think 100 to 350 is a really good play. 100 to 300 is a really good play. Ty? So Kobe, the Marvel Packs, Joe Frazier, or Bryce Harper? I like the Joe Frazier play. I like the Joe Frazier play. Hmm. I think for big time collectors, the tiebreaker cards clean. Ryan Johnson, the tiebreaker. So, if I have to pick between those two, uh, it's tough. But like, I'm gonna be honest. I I, I would pick the Kobe. I, I <laughs> like so I like the Joe Frazier because of the rarity aspect of it. That intrigues me. The Harper is a lot more risk versus reward, right? There's a lot of upside there, but no, I just don't see as much potential. The Kobe to me is like serial numbered stuff will matter long term. Kobe stuff is going to always be popular. I, I just, you know, I, I think this is a card you buy at 120, you know, 127 and you go home and you list it for 190 and you make 40 bucks. And I can, I just, uh, it's on eBay at auction. I, I think this is a real play. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the Kobe. Uh, I think we're all going different ones on this one. I you know there there's an art you know <laughs> the yeah. Marvel packs. You, you know you can make a couple hundred dollars doing that too, right? That's a unique yeah. play. So I, I, these are all really good. Uh, I like all of these, but if you're asking me to pick one, I'm picking Kobe. So who's the play of the week winner when all three of us pick different ones? <laughs> the guy we didn't pick. <laughs> Marvel wins. I think the Kobe based on. Ryan, put it, up, pick. put it up on Instagram. Yeah, I guess we could, we could let the people pick. That's Let's good. Let the people we pick. could let the people pick, but it's going to be the Kobe. You think? I think that long term, based on Ryan's intuition, and I just always think about the um, the, <laughs> everyday, the, the, everyday, <laughs> the everyday collector. I think uh, what I'm trying to do is unjade myself because this isn't as interesting to me, but this will move. Prism. Ruby All right, Wave. so 
Kobe. So you're changing you're changing your pick. Yeah. No, I'm not changing my my pick, but I'm saying I mean, you either are or you're not. It's pretty <laughs> Well, if we're all at a stalemate, it's like someone's got to make a move. Yeah, so are you going to be the bigger man and give up your pick? Yeah. Cuz I'm not. I am. I am. All right. Good for you. Congrats to you for doing that. A lot of people wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, I just did. Presented new information. All right. So is that what we're going with? Yeah, we're going with Kobe. All right. Kobe. So Kobe is the play of the week. Again, play of the week is brought to you by eBay, your number one spot for cards and collectibles. I really like play of the week. Play it's the good week. times. It's a good yeah. time. I love it. I think it's I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it's fun. Big play of the week guy. All right. So last but not least, we've got to get into latest launches. And I think it's worth pointing out, um, again, for those that are really in big into following breaks and boxes and a lot of that part of the hobby. Uh, last week, there were some some delays, right? You had that, uh, that ice storm down in Texas that kind of shut everything down. Weather moved up the, you know, the East Coast. Nashville, where a lot of product comes from, that's where a lot of the main distributor hubs are. That got delayed. So products like limited certified basketball, a lot of that stuff we did not get last week. Um, and I think that delayed a lot of products uh, in the future by like, I, I think a week on a lot of stuff. Um, not by not by much, but um, it'll be interesting to, to watch what happens because that definitely uh, sets some stuff back. But this week in releases, we've got Lee Flash Baseball, Garbage Pail Kids Food Fight, uh, Pokemon TCG First Partner Collector's Binder. Um, and that, I believe, is it for this week. You're going to have some stuff next week like Donner's Basketball, Black Diamond Hockey, and Prism EPL Soccer, as well as Plates and Patches Football. So next week will be big. But this week, I think there's nothing super crazy because of uh, the delays from Limited, Certified, um, I think even some Shining Fate stuff got stuck in Nashville and other places. So, um, so yeah, uh, not really a, a whole lot this week, but next week will be full of full of fun. If you, yes, you're gonna listen to this. This comes out tomorrow on YouTube and audio. Joao Felix is playing today. Atletico Madrid versus Chelsea. It's a good one. It's a big one. Champions League. There's also Champions League tomorrow. Tweet at Car Talk Pod tomorrow after listening to this. If you're a soccer fan with who you think is going to win the Champions League, we're going to do some giveaways. At Car Talk Pod on Twitter, give us your thoughts on who's winning Champions League. I know who I'm picking. So I want to leave you guys. Tyler. I want to I, I want to leave you something with this too. Darren Ravel was the guy that got me into the Dwayne the Rock Johnson Bumblebee card. Mm. Yeah, I saw him tweet about it. I thought it was super fascinating. This was you know over a year. This was a year ago, and the cards obviously exploded recently. There were some rumors that there's been some private sales on that card recently um, that that I've heard. And actually, one of our listeners mentioned it to me that there's been a couple private sales on that card. But Darren Ravel actually. Uh, put his PSA nine up for sale and it ends tonight. So this is Tuesday. So it'll end when the episode drops tomorrow. Uh, it's about 12 and nine at the moment. So I'll be as someone that owns a 10. Um, I'm very intrigued to see where the nine ends up. So again, a card I've just been following for quite some time, but I think it's something to, uh, that I, that I want to keep track of and, and watch and see how that card does. And if you're listening to this and you, and this is going to be on Wednesday and now we're doing a lot of, if you're listening to this, Hopefully you made that play, and if you did, let us know. Is he he's selling it through Probstein? Uh, Peter, it was one of somebody on eBay. That's but Darren's a, card, though. Yeah, he's tweeted about it. Interesting. So, all right, that's all we got for this week, guys. We will see you next week. Peace. Peace.